What's up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a break from working on the Land Cruiser and I'm going to be working on this guy. That's right, it is my 2003 BMW E46 330i. Over the weekend I took it out to Willow Springs Raceway and uh, the car actually did really well. Um, I was on track just hot lapping it lap after lap all day until when I pulled in the second time to change the the second set of tires um, it started steaming all crazy from underneath the hood luckily I was right there when it first started steaming so I shut off the engine right away and uh, I don't think there was any damage done to the motor I believe it's the expansion tank that finally gave out um, but I'm not 100% sure so uh, let's take it apart and see what it is exactly so the coolant leak was roughly right about here that's why i think it was the expansion tank or one of the connectors the hoses that blew out so um let's take out the intake the ducting and um see what we can see with the air box and the ducting removed i can get a clear view of the expansion tank however because it was oh is this the crack right here i think that's it right there i don't know if you can see that see if it can focus a little bit better but there is a crack right on the edge of the expansion tank so yeah looks like uh, the expansion tank has to come out and get replaced so on these E46 expansion tanks you've got the main hose the main upper hose right here so we've got to take this guy off there are these little clips of course and then there is a, another hose right here and then there's one tab on the bottom along with the sensor. And I'll show you once I get it out. These two hoses do not need to be disconnected. You could stay um, where they are. Um, they actually go into the, I think it goes into the radiator. I'm not exactly sure. It's been a while. But um, let me show you how to take these clips off. So to take off these clips, what you want to do is have like a pick or something. Lift it up like that, and you've got the other one. There we go. Um, if you can't get it out by pulling, gently use um, a screwdriver. You don't want to break this plastic end because if you break this plastic end, you have to get a new one from BMW. Now just to get this hose and the clips ready for reinstallation, you make sure you want to put the clips back into position. So when you push it into the um, new expansion tank, it just clips right in. So now that we got the top hose out of the way, next we're gonna have to work on this guy. Now, as you can see right here, let's see if we'll focus. It's actually the same style clip as the one on top. So, do this, pull it up slightly until it clicks. should come out. Yep, and there's water coming out, so that's fine. Let's just move that guy out of the way as well. Last but not least, there is a connection on the bottom of the expansion tank, and I don't know if you can see that, but there is a little white tab right at the bottom. So if you look, this is the front of the car, obviously. This expansion tank and it's right down there there is a little white tab you want to pull that towards the passenger side and then it will release the expansion tank but don't yank it out all the way um, the uh, there is one sensor underneath that I think is still there so let me go ahead and give this a shot
Okay, so get this guy out of the way. And then you want to pull straight up. And there's the sound of a mess happening. And this guy kind of comes out. Now, there is a sensor still underneath here. You want to be careful. Which is this guy right here. You can see that right there, that little white tab. And that one, I believe, you spin it one way or another and it's supposed to come out there you go that's the sensor right there it's the uh, level sensor so you spin that clockwise and it comes out so there is one broken expansion tank you can see the crack all the way along the side so I believe this one is the original one for this car so it had hundred forty something thousand miles on it so it was definitely due this is the old expansion tank that blew up and as you can see right here is the crack it goes all the way down like i said this one had a hundred and forty something thousand miles on it so it definitely was due um i do have a spare one here i think this is not a uh, an OEM one, this is an aftermarket China one. And um, this one looks almost the same. I forget why I didn't use this, but some parts that you wanna salvage from your uh, current setup is definitely this clip right here. So this guy actually comes off and you wanna put it onto the new one. And then of course your radiator cap, you wanna switch that over. So um, yeah, let me switch these guys over and um, we should be ready to put them in and this guy is relatively simple you just pull it outwards a little bit and it falls right out so on the new one you want to put the clip into the groove on one side into the groove on the other side and see basically when you pull that releases it when you snap it in it locks it in place so um to install it you should have it snapped in but we'll see what happens. Let me see if I can get this guy. Since it's not an OEM part and the hoses are relatively old already, um, let's see if it'll snap in really nice for me. So first of all, let's get the sensor back into the bottom. The sensor goes in right there. I don't know if I can get a good camera angle on this, but trust me, it's going in. So I was able to get the sensor connected underneath now we have to slide the actual tank into its proper slot now if you remember there is a little tab right here where my finger is right here it actually goes into the plastic bracket and then you push down on it so let me show you actually on the other the old one to see where that exactly slides into so on this old expansion tank you can see it clearly this is the little tab that needs to be sliding into the little uh, plastic bracket on the radiator. So basically what you do, you push it in and then push down. And that's how the expansion tank will properly seat. Um, hopefully the two hoses on the bottom will also click into place when that happens. If not, we might have to push the hoses up a little bit just to get them to snap in. But uh, let's hope for the best. Line up this plastic tab right here. Click it in. I think that's in place but I didn't hear a snap from underneath so let's make sure the hoses are connected properly I think it's in place so a good way to check if your expansion tank is seated properly you want to push it forward and back and it should basically move the whole radiator with it so that means the little plastic hook is in place and if you want to push it pull it upwards it doesn't move it doesn't just shoot out so I think we are okay next off we need to connect the other two hoses that were here Let's see, it's this guy right here so make sure again snap the uh, metal clips back into the hose and then push it in so that one clicked really nicely and then we've got this one. Put 
but also clicked really nicely. Okay, so now all I gotta do is fill it up with coolant, run it, and see if there's any leaks. So I'm just gonna pour in water for right now, just in case it does leak some more. Um, it'll only be water coming out, not actual coolant. And for the coolant, you definitely want the blue BMW stuff. Um, that's what's recommended by the manufacturer. So let's top it up all the way because it needs to bleed. The system probably has a lot of air in it. So we're going to let it run like this for maybe like a minute or so and let all the air bubbles kind of come out from the system. And then once that happens, I'm going to go ahead and cap it, let the system pressurize and see if there are any more leaks. And then obviously after that, we're going to wait for it to cool down and fill, up with, uh, fill it up with coolant all over again. So there's still bubbles coming out. However, the car is fully warmed up. I'm going to cap it right now and see if it holds pressure. So we're going to let it idle for a little bit longer. So now it's actually been roughly about 10-15 minutes and when you squeeze the hose it is hot and it has pressure so that means the hoses were all clipped in correctly. I wiped down all the areas where there was water where I spilled water so I know if there's any water dripping and so far there is not. So inside the car yeah i still have my car seat in here i need to take this out and uh, put the stock seat back in so i can drive it around normally now in here you can see the temperature is uh closer to hot um don't worry about that too much because the system's not properly bled there's probably a lot of uh air pockets in the cooling system because obviously you know we opened it up a lot of water ran out and all that stuff even though we filled it up there's uh air in the system so what I'm going to have to do is turn it off right now, let it cool down completely, then open the radiator cap. This expansion tank should be close to empty. Fill it up with water again and then continue the cycle. So that way we can get all the air bubbles out. I also let the bleeder screw loose slightly to relieve the uh, air bubble and the air pressure in the system. As, as you can see, this is all air there is no coolant coming out. Um, so there is definitely a lot of air trapped in the system. It's gonna be a long bleeding process. Okay, so the steam has stopped coming out of the bleeder valves. There shouldn't be any more pressure in the system, which there isn't, the hose you can squeeze. So that means you can open the radiator cap. Just be careful when you're doing this hot always use a rag there we go and clearly the water is already at the low level so let's fill it back up and redo the process so I already poured some coolant in there and now it's uh, mostly water this time I'm actually gonna leave the bleeder screw slightly open and let the water seep out from there. So make sure you fill the water up completely um, for the purpose of bleeding. Um, you want the water as full as possible. Any excess water, it will bleed out so you won't hurt the engine. So let's cap this guy. So already you can see the temperature is back to basically normal. I have the heater running because also the heater core might get air trapped in it. So you want to bleed the heater core uh, the, the heater system also. So right now um, I don't expect the needle to go any higher than that. But after it fully warms up and the system uh, flushes out all the air, I will let it cool down one more time, check the water level and then that should be okay as far as the bleeding goes. 
Let's open up this bleeder valve and see if water or air comes out now. See? Right now it's all water, so that's definitely a good sign. Close it back up. Let it warm up completely. Let the water warm up inside the expansion tank and we'll try it again. So that is it for the E46 expansion tank replacement. Um, relatively easy and straightforward. Uh, as far as the part goes, the replacement expansion tank, I will leave a link in the description down below. So if you need one, make sure you go ahead and check that out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. And for more DIY videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.